Hey everyone, welcome back to the church building. I'm Andy. We are reading the Bible cover to cover, and we are approaching the midpoint of Second Chronicles. That's where we're at tonight. Uh, so we're going to read through uh, 13 through 17, hopefully, uh, and that'll bring us about to the midpoint of Second Chronicles. So we still have a ways to go. But let's look at chapter 13. In the 18th year of King Jeroboam, Abijah began to reign over Judah. He reigned for three years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Micaiah, daughter of Uriel of Gibeah. Now there was a war between Abijah and Jeroboam. Abijah engaged in battle, having an army of valiant warriors, 400,000 picked men. And Jeroboam drew up his line of battle against him with 800,000 picked mighty warriors. Then Abijah stood on the slope of Mount Zemariam, that is, in the hill country of Ephraim, and said, Listen to me, Jeroboam, and all Israel. Do you not know that the Lord God of Israel gave the kingship over Israel forever to David and his sons by a covenant of salt? Yet Jeroboam, son of Nebat, a servant of Solomon, son of David, rose up and rebelled against the Lord. And certain worthless scoundrels gathered around him and defied Rehoboam, son of Solomon, when Rehoboam was young and irresolute and could not withstand him. And now you think that you can withstand the kingdom of the Lord in the hand of the sons of David, because you are a great multitude and have with you the golden calves of Jeroboam made as gods for you. Have you not driven out the priests of the Lord, the descendants of Aaron and the Levites, and made priests for yourselves like the peoples of other lands? Whoever comes to be consecrated with a young bull or seven rams becomes a priest of what are no gods. But as for us, the Lord is our God, and we have not abandoned him. We have priests ministering to the Lord who are descendants of Aaron and Levites for their service. Verse 11. They offer to the Lord every morning and every evening burnt offerings and fragrant incense, set out the rows of bread on the table of pure gold, and care for the golden lampstand so that its lamps may burn every evening. For we keep the charge of the Lord our God, but you have abandoned him. See, God is with us at our head, and his priests have their battle trumpets to sound the call to battle against you. O Israelites, do not fight against the Lord, the God of your ancestors, for you cannot succeed. Jeroboam had sent an ambush around to come on them from behind. Thus his troops were in front of Judah, and the ambush was behind them. When Judah turned, the battle was in front of them and behind them. They cried out to the Lord, and the priests blew the trumpets. Then the people of Judah raised the battle shout. And when the people of Judah shouted, God defeated Jeroboam and all Israel before Abijah and Judah. The Israelites fled before Judah, and God gave them into their hands. Abijah and his army defeated them with great slaughter. Five hundred thousand picked men of Israel fell slain. Thus the Israelites were subdued at that time, and the people of Judah prevailed, because they relied on the Lord, the God of their ancestors. Abijah pursued Jeroboam and took cities from him, Bethel with its villages, and Jeshana with its villages, and Ephron with its villages. Jeroboam did not recover his power in the days of Abijah. The Lord struck him down, and he died. But Abijah grew strong. He took 14 wives and became the father of 22 sons and 16 daughters. The rest of the acts of Abijah, his behavior and his deeds, are written in the, history, in the story of the prophet Edo. Chapter 14 So Abijah slept with his ancestors, and they buried him in the city of David. His son Asa succeeded him. In his days the land had rest for ten years. Asa did what was good and right in the sight of the Lord his God. He took away the foreign altars and the high places, broke down the pillars, hewed down the sacred poles, and commanded Judah to seek the Lord, the God of their ancestors, and keep the law and the commandment. 
He also removed from all the cities of Judah the high places and the incense altars, and the kingdom had rest under him. He built fortified cities in Judah, while the land had rest. He had no war in those years, for the Lord gave him peace. He said to Judah, Let us build these cities and surround them with walls and towers, gates and bars. The land is still ours because we have sought the Lord our God. We have sought him, and he has given us peace on every side. So they built and prospered. Asa had an army of 300,000 from Judah, armed with large shields and spears, and 280,000 troops from Benjamin, who carried shields and drew bows. All these were mighty warriors. Verse 9. Zerah the Ethiopian came out against them with an army of a million men and 300 chariots and came as far as Meresha. Asa went out to meet him and they drew up their lines of battle in the valley of Zephatha at Meresha. Asa cried to the Lord his God, O Lord, there is no difference for you between helping the mighty and the weak. Help us, O Lord, our God, for we rely on you, and in your name we have come against this multitude. O Lord, you are our God. Let no mortal prevail against you. So the Lord defeated the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. Asa and the army with him pursued them as far as Gerar, and the Ethiopians fell until no one remained alive, for they were broken before the Lord and his army. The people of Judah carried away a great quantity of booty. They defeated all the cities around Gerar, for the fear of the Lord was on them. They plundered all the cities, for there was much plunder in them. They also attacked the tents of those who had livestock, and carried away sheep and goats in abundance and camels. Then they returned to Jerusalem. Chapter 15 The Spirit of God came upon Azariah, son of Oded. He went out to meet Asa and said to him, Hear me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you abandon him, he will abandon you. For a long time Israel was without the true God and without a teaching priest and without law. But when in their distress they turned to the Lord, the God of Israel, and sought him, he was found by them. In those times it was not safe for anyone to come, to go or come, for great disturbances afflicted all the inhabitants of the land. They were broken in pieces, nation against nation and city against city. For God troubled them with every sort of distress. But you take courage. Do not let your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. Verse 8. When Asa heard these words, the prophecy of Azariah, son of Oded, he took courage and put away the abominable idols from all the land of Judah and Benjamin and from the towns that he had taken in the hill country of Ephraim. He repaired the altar of the Lord that was in front of the vestibule of the house of the Lord. He gathered all Judah and Benjamin and those from Ephraim, Manasseh, and Simeon who were residing as aliens with them. For great numbers had deserted to him from Israel when they saw the Lord his God was with him. They were gathered at Jerusalem in the third month of the fifteenth year of the reign of Asa. They sacrificed to the Lord on that day from the booty that they had brought, seven hundred oxen and seven thousand sheep. They entered into a covenant to seek the Lord, the God of their ancestors, with all their heart and with all their soul. Whoever would not seek the Lord, the God of Israel, should be put to death whether young or old, man or woman. They took an oath to the Lord with a loud voice, and with shouting, and with trumpets, and with horns, all Judah rejoiced over the oath, for they had sworn with all their heart, and they had sought him with their whole desire, and he was found by them, and the Lord gave them rest all around. Verse 16. King Asa even removed his mother Mekah from being queen mother because she had made an abominable image for Asherah. Asa cut down her image, crushed it, and burned it at the Wadi Kidron. But the high places were not taken out of Israel. Nevertheless, the heart of Asa was true all his days. He brought into the house of God the votive gifts of his father. 
and his own votive gifts, silver, gold, and utensils. And there was no more war until the 35th year of the reign of Asa. Chapter 16. In the 36th, in the 36th year of the reign of Asa, King Basha, Basha of Israel went up against Judah and built Ramah to prevent anyone from going out of out or coming into the territory of King Asa of Judah. Then Asa took silver and gold from the treasures of the house of the Lord and the king's house and sent them to King Ben-Hadad of Aram, who resided in Damascus, saying, Let there be an alliance between me and you, like that between my father and your father. I am sending you, sending to you silver and gold. Go, break your alliance with King Basha of Israel, so that he may withdraw from me. Ben Hadad listened to King Asa and sent the commanders of his armies against the cities of Israel. They conquered Ejon, Dan, Abel, Miam, and all the store cities of Naphtali. When Basha heard of it, he stopped building Ramah and let his work cease. Then King Asa brought all Judah, and they carried away the stones of Ramah and its timber, with which Basha had been building. And with them he built up Geba and Mizpah. At the time, the seer Hanani came, came to King Asa of Judah and said to him, Because you relied on the king of Aram and did not rely on the Lord your God, the, king, the army of the king of Aram has escaped you. Were not the Ethiopians and the Libyans a huge army with exceedingly many chariots and cavalry? Yet because you relied on the Lord, he gave them into your hand. For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the entire earth to strengthen those whose heart is true to him. You have done foolishly in this. For now, for, for, from now on, you will have wars. Then Asa was angry with the seer and put him in the stocks and prison, for he was in a rage with him because of this. And Asa inflicted cruelties on some of the people at the time. Verse 11, the acts of Asa from the first to the last, are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. In the thirty-ninth year of his reign, Asa was diseased in his feet, and his disease became severe. Yet even in his disease he did not seek the Lord, but sought help from physicians. Then Asa slept with his ancestors, dying in the forty-first year of his reign. They buried him in the tomb that he had hewn out for himself in the city of David. They laid him on a beer that had been filled with various kinds of spices prepared by the perfumer's art, and they made a very great fire in his honor. Chapter 17 His son Jehoshaphat succeeded him and strengthened himself against Israel. He placed forces in all the fortified cities of Judah and set garrisons in the land of Judah and in the cities of Ephraim that his father Asa had taken. The Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the earlier ways of his father. He did not seek the Baals, but sought the God of his father and walked in his commandments and not according to the ways of Israel. Therefore the Lord established his kingdom in his hand. All Judah brought tribute to Jehoshaphat and he had great riches and honor. His heart was courageous in the ways of the Lord, and furthermore, he removed the high places and the sacred poles from Judah. In the third year of his reign, he sent his officials, Ben Hale, Obadiah, Zechariah, Nathaniel, and Micaiah, to teach in the cities of Judah. With them were the Levites, Shemaiah, Nathaniah, Zebediah, Asahel, Shemiramoth, Jehonathan, Adonijah, Dobijah, and Tob Adonijah. And with these Levites, the priests Elishama and Jehoram, they taught in Judah, having the book of the law of the Lord with them. They went around through all the cities of Judah and taught among the people. The fear of the Lord fell on all the kingdoms of the lands around Judah and they did not make war against Jehoshaphat. So 
Sorry, where was I? Verse 11. Some of the Philistines brought Jehoshaphat presents and silver for tribute, and the Arabs also brought him 7,700 rams and 7,700 male goats. Jehoshaphat grew steadily greater. He built fortresses and storage cities in Judah. He carried out great works in the cities of Judah. He had soldiers, mighty warriors in Jerusalem. This was the muster of them by ancestral houses. Of Judah, the commanders of the thousands. Adna, the command, commander, with 300,000 mighty warriors. And the next to him, Jehohanan, the commander, with 280,000. And next to him, Amasia, son of Zikri, a volunteer for the service of the Lord, with 200,000 mighty warriors. Of Benjamin, Elida, a mighty warrior with 200,000 armed with, a, with bow and shield. And next to him, Jehazabad, with 180,000 armed for war. These were in the service of the king, besides those whom the king had placed in the fortified cities throughout all Judah. That's it for tonight. Thanks for joining me. We'll continue on with Second Chronicles and uh, complete the second half in time of the book. Thanks for listening. See you next time.